Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. April 20th, 2020. Just seconds to go before the cash close with the S&Ps here. Down just shy of 2%. People, before we go any further, listen, all is not well inside of this marketplace. I'm going to spend about the next 10 minutes detailing precisely what we are seeing right now. Let's get to work and start with the S&Ps. Again, off about 50 handles as we come into the cash close. Today, today is really all about our gravity points. You know, this is what we kind of call pinging back and forth between gravity points. Down below over here, we have none other than 2811. Uh, right up top over here, it's 2842. And that's exactly what we effectively saw inside of today's trading session was pinging back and forth between those gravity points. Now, before I go any further and before I start detailing, ah, hey, you know, all is not well, you know, inside of the marketplace, because I think that's a fairly large statement. There's a lot behind that. Okay. You know, one of the things, first of all, that that's a standout in here, and, and I think you really have to respect this, you know, it points today, you're, uh, and again, you're seeing some massive volume into the close, not surprisingly, driving the markets towards uh, the 2011. But at points today, you got the S&Ps down 30, 40 S&P handles, right? Okay, you're seeing some heavy sell side activity. And you take a look at the volume. Now, I have been just relentless about this lately. Yeah, the volume, the volume, there's no liquidity behind it. The bid offer spreads, okay, they're thin. And I don't want you to take this as, as necessarily being like a wild negative. It's just no one is showing up to pull the trigger out there. And what that's going to do is it's going to open the marketplace to a monstrosity move without having okay, to place huge contract size. And I want you to, again, to kind of grasp what I'm talking about here. You know, right in this neighborhood down here as we started to sell off, yeah, some contract size kind of picked up over here. People doing 3,000 contracts a minute, right? 3,000, that's negligible at best. But there was points today we're sitting up here at 2842. We weren't doing but 1,000 contracts per minute over there. And and that that is an issue, all right? I mean, it's a very substantial issue. The contract size inside of the S&P futures, I mean, for the most part, this is what drives order flow to the rest of the marketplace. It is just non-existent. And my, I'm going to give you a little shot across the bow, my warning to you. If you trade this product, you have to recognize we could come out and have, you know, one, uh, one minute. And you just saw a minute into the cash close over here. That's pretty substantial. But you could have one minute, okay, where forget about an eight or a 10 point move. You could have 20, 30, 40 point moves inside of the S&Ps if we actually decide, okay, to trade some heavy contract size into that. And I cannot stress this enough. Okay, that we're seeing right now a fractured marketplace okay, with low liquidity. Again, I know a lot of people look at this, uh, that's scary, hold me. Okay, it, But it's one of the reasons that the volatility okay, remains higher. Like the professional world sees it. Like if you look at today, today seems a little bit odd because you're like, oh, the S&Ps are off by 2%. Yeah, okay. but the VIX is up some 13%. You're like, oh, what gives? Because the marketplace recognizes, all right, this low liquidity kind of risk out there. All right, so enough, okay? Let's actually cruise over to the volatility futures. By the way, the volatility futures are also displaying, okay? We're just wildly inverted still. And, and again, when I say all is not well with the marketplace, well, this is another reason right here. So we talk about liquidity, but then we look at the volatility futures where 30-day volatility futures are trading at like, you know, 38 and change. Then you come out like 58 days. These guys are at 35, all right? They're completely inverted. What they're saying is the world is very likely to blow up right now, but don't worry. It's all going to be over in the future. Um, it's again. When you're inverted like this, you can't trust the S&Ps as far as you can throw them. So we have this fractured liquidity. We've got the volatility futures completely inverted. The bonds, okay, where do the bonds fit into this picture? They don't. They're trading 122,000 contracts. 122,000 contracts. They're dead. Now, I'm still going to go out there and I'm going to trade the bonds a little bit in the near future. But I do want to point out again. Let me close up this left side bar for a second to make this a little easier to understand. I want you to look back with me, okay, at the bonds over the last three years. Now, this is a three-year daily, three-year daily. And where volume kind of was today is, I mean, right down here. 
So for the last three years, what kind of volume you see in the bonds? Oh, yeah, you have to actually come into like Christmas and, and half a trading sessions to see volume this light. I'm just showing you that's where we are right now. And if you don't think that that's an issue, if you think everything's right, okay, when the bond market fails to trade, you got to understand right now, there's a couple reasons. Maybe the bonds aren't trading. Maybe it's the fact that the Fed stepped in there and squashed everybody out. Okay, could be. Or maybe capital isn't necessarily moving. All right. Again, we don't necessarily know what the issue is in the bonds. All we know is that there's nobody trading them and the volatility died out. And yes, that did correspond with the Fed. But when you look at the ZN, okay, the ZN only traded 680,000 contracts. Most days you come in with the S&Ps where they were this morning, you should see almost a million bonds and contracts, or I should say the ZN's trading. You should see almost a million Okay, in terms of this this note trading and and the entire trading session only did 680,000 contracts. Okay, mm, yeah, things are afoot right now. All right, let me continue on over here. So inside of today's trading session, where does that really leave us? Well, all right, so the dollar rallied a little bit, neither here nor there. Again, similarly to the bonds, the dollar is not much of an indication lately. Okay, we come over to gold, gold rallied back up a little bit today. Again, neither here nor there. So what's more interesting? All right, I'll cover oil for a second. Then we'll go back to the equity markets because the talk of the town right now is oil. And you have to recognize why. If you missed oil at all today, okay, it is the talk of the town. So oil right now, and, and again, you have to really kind of comprehend how can this even happen. But uh, let me freeze the screen for a second and just show you, okay? Those quotes in here, these are actually correct. And when I say it's the talk of the town, everybody in the entire industry right now is effectively talking oil. And I don't want to talk about it to death, but effectively what happened here has never happened in history before. The front month contract, which expired, okay, went out today. And it went out, all right, at, uh, again, and I'm just going to detail this on your screen, basically negative $37.63 a barrel. So... What does it mean that a product actually goes negative? Well, one of the first things you have to think about is this morning, you'll see that the contract closed down $48. This morning, let's say that contract was positive 21. Okay, let's, let's just put it at that price, positive 21. It is possible to not only lose the $21, but then go into the negative. Why? Because it's an oil contract, okay? You don't want to take delivery. You can't take delivery, so what do you do? You have to close it or have to bail out of it, all right? So if you're long oil, and oil was trading at $21 a barrel, okay, what do you do? You eventually have to sell it, okay? But can you sell it for a debit out there? Yeah, we're getting into the theater of the absolute absurd when you start to think about it, okay? Into another way to visualize this, I think, is to come over here to the charts and you go to what's called product depth. This is actually a depth curve. And what the depth curve allows you to see is, this is, okay, where the oil contract closed today. And then, of course, this happens to be the new oil contract, the June oil contract, or what we term the active contract, all right? So you have a situation right now where, again, oil, okay, has effectively gone negative. But anybody that knows anything, you don't necessarily have to trade, okay? You don't necessarily have to trade the one-day oil. Almost everyone that was trading in oil today was actually trading in the active contract, which is 29 days out. So I think that the industry is making kind of a big deal about this. Um, not a lot of retail traders got caught in the crossfire here. However, I do want to make this statement. This decimated trading firms. There's no question. Some trading firms are not going to open tomorrow because of this, because some of the trading firms do actually carry all right, that near-term contract, and it did go negative, and it did settle out at negative $37.63. There's no question about it, okay, and they got blown apart in that particular trade, and what kept happening is the more the contract would head down, okay, the more people had to bail out of it. The more people that bailed out of it, the contract did flip over, and it went negative, negative. and again, you could see, uh, what was the low? Negative 40. Again, it's becoming completely absurd. Now, Put that aside for a second. The 29-day contract, the contract that most people were effectively involved in, it too closed down almost $4, almost $4, which is 15%. So if you thought that this was absurd, forget it for a second, okay? Most were already in this contract. It's trading at 21s, but 
oil right now is it $21 a barrel but the contract has now rolled forward again being a continuous contract you look this is a continuous contract as long as you're trading the active contract you're going to be fine um, nevertheless Okay, how much damage once again is being done to the energy world when oil is dropping some 15 or 16 percent trading session back to the regular chart over here. It's hideous out there, people. And this a time like this is when you realize you do not. And I just cannot stress this enough. OK, you do not want to go out there and try to purchase a product like USO. OK, you will get devastated in the USO because the USO is involved. OK in the oil futures themselves and the uso is going to have to roll the oil future forward which is going to devastate this product into the ground effectively what i'm saying is if you hold the uso okay you're going to be uh you know taken for a ride because effectively okay what we call again this contango yeah that roll is massive all right yeah i mean even from the 21 all right or i should say the 29 day oil to the 63 day oil this is actually june oil versus july oil look at the roll differential you're looking at over six dollars okay in difference in there and that's because for the most part everywhere in the world that you want to store oil it's filled so what do you do okay well oil in the short duration becomes dirt cheap because nobody wants it who wants oil for the next 29 days not me because there's nowhere to put it so what happens is then back month oil which is i'll go all the way out 275 days look at this trading for like 34 dollars a barrel which is still dirt cheap okay but that's the cost of storage these days for that oil by the way the s p's are selling off just a bit more here in the after hours might i suggest they uh they're going to cross through this 2811 probably bounce back up to it in the after hours here i do believe we heard from the likes of ibm Okay, so IBM is out in the after hours, bouncing around, nothing, uh, nothing too crazy. Listen, earnings, this particular earnings season, I'm actually going to push earnings aside a little bit. Not going to be heavily engaged in earnings simply because, okay, we're off the beaten path. Liquidity is not that deep. And for the most part, I think a lot of these firms are going to, this is going to actually be a gimme for, uh, for many of the firms in and around this earnings period. Everybody recognizes how bad things are. Again, we see still those sustainability inside of the S&Ps. I mean, come on, we're still trading at 2,800, which brings me to the next point, okay? A lot of, lot of rough news out there, you know, and again, I'm throwing out big things like, you know, all is not well inside of the markets. Of course, it's not well inside of the markets. You know, one of the things and we haven't even begun to discuss is, you know, things like mortgages, which, you know, there were stats as I was seeing, you know, that were coming out last week 2.9 million mortgages entered into a program basically that says you don't have to pay your mortgage that's 5.5 percent of all active mortgages that's just the last couple of weeks which makes it right now we're already more substantial than the entire financial crisis but we'll push that aside again all is not necessarily well in the markets okay right now if you're going to be trading in this marketplace right i want to bring up something like the spiders okay i want to look at maybe the qqq Long positions, short positions. This is of critical importance right now. We'll open up the 25 day options inside of the spiders and I'm actually gonna snap to what's called implied vol. Okay, so implied volatility. I'm gonna go ahead and close up this left side bar. Okay, what we're looking at here and why I'm pulling up implied volatility. I wanna keep eyes right here, implied volatility. This is implied volatility, the calls. Okay, then over here, implied volatility, implied volatility, the puts. The skew out there, people, the skew is, uh, is pretty monumental. Okay, the out of the money puts are really trading for a premium versus, for instance, the at the money puts. And the at the money calls are trading for a big premium versus the out of the money calls. Okay, so quite simply put, you want to get bullish, you want to get bearish, this is how you do it. If you want to get bearish, you probably want to go out and use, okay, like an in out spread. It's one strike in the money, one strike out of the money, one strike in the money, one strike out of the money. In this particular case, you know, you can even go to the 180. Sorry, market's moving around quickly right now. So um, you could probably go to like the 283s, okay, sell the 281s. Look at this. This is a $2 wide spread. Now I'm going to freeze the screen right there. This is a $2 wide spread, okay, with a marketplace right now um, that's sitting somewhere around like 281 almost. But, um, Again, it's a $2 wide spread that's trading for an 80 cent debit. Okay, that's pretty effectively priced. And I'll tell you why it's so effectively priced. If you look at the 283s, 
Okay. In this case, you're buying, oh, like a 36.7 vol and you're turning around and selling, okay, like a 37.7 vol. So the skew is really, really favorable in there. Now, Okay, if you were to do that on the call spread, the call spread is going to tear you apart because you're trading a 39 point what, you know, two vol and then selling, for instance, like a 38 vol, the skew is against you. So how do you deal with bullish trades? Bullish trades require, okay, things so you're going to have to up the learning curve here, which we have tons of archives here at TheoTrade. So we have tons of archives, obviously, on in-out spreads, but we have tons of archives also on trades, okay, like back ratio spreads. Okay, and I don't want to have to, you know, get too cute. So I just want you guys to understand with if you're doing a bearish trade, use the in out spread. But if you're doing a bullish trade, might you consider something like a back ratio and on these back ratios? And there's a this one's fine on these back ratios. You don't have to put any capital per se up front, meaning that. All right. So it's a two cent debit or sometimes it's even for a, uh, you know, uh, even money. In this case, this one's actually, look at the mid price on here. Mid price is literally right near even money. And what that means when I say even money, you don't pay anything up front. So if the market were to crash and burn on this trade, well, you don't lose anything. You don't make anything. You don't, you don't lose anything. And if the market's to explode and continue to explode higher, in this case, I mean, the market would have to cruise up to like, you know, 305 ish. Okay. Nevertheless, all I'm trying to do is I'm not trying to tell you to get bullish or bearish on the spiders. I'm just saying in a marketplace like this, you have to be smarter in the types of trades that you place. You can't just go out there and buy a bullish spread, skews too big. But on the put side, you can absolutely buy a put spread. On the bullish side, you got to use things. You got to get a little cute maybe, okay, and use that, that back ratio. And I hate to use that term, but that's what it is. You just have to, again, think through these trades. That skew is really going to matter right now. Again, these S&Ps in a bit of trouble. They closed down, okay, kind of harshly here right into the cash close. Ironically, just shy of the uh, 2811 in here. S&Ps, though, off about 2%. You know, what do we expect the next couple of days? I'll tell you what to expect. Listen, okay, overall, and I'm going to give you a big take in here. Don't rush in. Don't rush into this marketplace. I don't care what, you know what, a, a, even at fear of missing an opportunity, I have no fear of missing an opportunity. You think I missed this, this bullish run? Eh, I had a couple of bullish positions here and there, but for the most part, I've been very close to flat delta. Now I'm actually generating right now some negative delta, meaning I'm going to want the marketplace to go back down just a bit. Nothing, nothing too huge, nothing too crazy. I don't mind showing you guys any of the positions in here. In fact, let me total up the accounts for today. All right, so we ended up, positive like five grand today and tying up only seventy thousand dollars of capital okay and net net i just want you to see my delta this is spider beta weighted i'm only negative 500 deltas again very negligible amounts of risk but i say this okay don't think you're missing opportunities to the upside let everything get resolved okay in the near term even at fear again of missing some of the upside let it go i don't want to hear this fear of missing out stuff let it go let the markets kind of play out the opportunities will come but this could take months and months to unfold. Thanks everybody for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye bye.